Hello. Welcome to this lesson exploring chemical reactions in aqueous solutions. When different ionic solutions are mixed, a reaction may occur where the anions exchange places. The positive ions of each salt bond with the negative ions of the other salt. This type of reaction is called an ion exchange reaction. There are three types of ion exchange reactions. Precipitation reactions, gas forming reactions, and acid base reactions. In this lesson, we are going to be investigating precipitation reactions. A precipitation reaction is a reaction where two ionic solutions are mixed and an insoluble salt, in other words, a solid, is formed in the solution. This solid is called a precipitate. These precipitation reactions can be very useful. They can be used to remove unwanted ions from substances and for manufacturing certain chemicals. Another use is to identify specific ions in solution, and it is this use that we are going to investigate in the lesson. Let's go to the lab to test for the presence of the chloride ion in solution. We are going to do this using silver nitrate and nitric acid. First, we need to prepare a solution of sodium chloride and water to test for chlorides. We know that there are chloride ions present. So let's see what happens when we add silver nitrate to the solution. As you can see, when we add silver nitrate to the sodium chloride ion solution, a wide precipitate forms. Why does this happen, and what does it mean? If a precipitate forms, it means that there may be chloride ions in the solution. Let's see if we can represent what happened in a balanced chemical equation. We start with sodium chloride and silver nitrate. We write these as our reactants. Now remember that this is an ion exchange reaction. We said that what happens is that the positive ions swap negative ions with each other. The chloride ions and the nitrate ions swap partners, so sodium nitrate and silver chloride form. Note that both ions of the two ionic substances swap over. This is called a double displacement reaction. Can you work out how we know that it is the silver chloride that makes a precipitate? Here is a hint. Use the rules of solubility. Did you see that all the sodium salts are very soluble? So, the precipitate could not have been a sodium salt. It must be the silver salt. But we haven't finished with our test for chlorides. Unfortunately, the formation of a white precipitate when we add silver nitrate can also indicate the presence of a carbonate ion. So, let's go back to the lab. In order to confirm that this precipitate does indeed show the presence of chloride ions, we have to do a further test. We allow the precipitate that was formed by the addition of silver nitrate to settle at the bottom of the test tube. We then carefully remove the liquid above the precipitate with a pipette or a dropper. Now we add dilute nitric acid to the precipitate and shake the test tube gently. If the precipitate does not dissolve in the nitric acid, then the presence of chloride ions is confirmed because silver chloride is not soluble in nitric acid. Can you see that the precipitate does not dissolve? That means that there are definitely chloride ions in the solution. The next test we will do is for the presence of bromide ions. This time, we will start with a substance that we know contains bromide, potassium bromide. When we add silver nitrate to the potassium bromide solution, a pale yellow precipitate forms. This gives us an indication that there may be bromide ions in the solution. Can you represent what happened in a balanced chemical equation? We start with potassium bromide and silver nitrate. Again, remember this is an ion exchange reaction. So again, the Br plus and the NO3 minus ions swap. And this is what we have. The products are potassium nitrate and silver bromide. Again, because both ions of the two ionic solutions swap, we call this double displacement reaction. In order to confirm that the precipitate is silver bromide, we add dilute nitric acid. If the precipitate does not dissolve, we can confirm that the precipitate is silver bromide. Let's check this experimentally. Again, we allow the precipitate to settle at the bottom of the test tube. We remove the liquid above the precipitate and add nitric acid to the precipitate. We see that the precipitate does not dissolve, so we are sure that this precipitate is silver bromide. The third precipitate test that we are going to do in this lesson is the test for the presence of iodide ions. Again, the initial test uses silver nitrate. Let's see what type of precipitate this forms. In this test, we use a potassium iodide solution and we add silver nitrate to it. 
as we do this, we can see that a deeper yellow precipitate forms. By now, you can represent what happened in a balanced chemical equation. Start with the potassium iodide and silver nitrate. We write these down. Since we know that this is a double displacement ion exchange reaction, we can swap the positive and negative ions. This gives potassium nitrate and silver iodide. To confirm the presence of silver iodide, we have to use nitric acid to test the solubility of the precipitate. As before, we need to let the precipitate settle and remove the liquid above it. When we add the nitric acid, we can see that the precipitate does not dissolve. This confirms that the precipitate is indeed silver iodide. So far, we have used ion exchange reactions to test for the presence of the halide ions in solutions. But we can also use precipitation reactions to confirm the presence of other ions. We will now investigate how to confirm the presence of sulfate ions. We will use sodium sulfate and barium nitrate in this test. As we add the barium nitrate solution to the sodium sulfate, we can see a white precipitate forming. Let's write the equation that represents this reaction. We can see that the sodium sulfate and the barium nitrate react to form sodium nitrate and barium sulfate. But we have not yet finished our test. Both sulfate ions and carbonate ions form a white precipitate when mixed with barium nitrate. To confirm that the precipitate is definitely barium sulfate, we again need to test with nitric acid. After removing the liquid, we can see that as we add dilute nitric acid to the precipitate, the precipitate does not dissolve in the nitric acid. This confirms that the precipitate is barium sulfate. The final test in this lesson is the test for carbonate ions. To test for the presence of carbonate ions, we will use sodium carbonate and add barium nitrate. We can see that a white precipitate forms. We can represent this ion exchange precipitation reaction in an equation which shows that sodium carbonate plus barium nitrate react to form sodium nitrate and barium carbonate. As we mentioned before, when reacted with barium nitrate, solutions containing sulfate ions form a white precipitate. Solutions containing carbonate ions also form a white precipitate. Let's test the precipitate with dilute nitric acid again. This time, we see that the precipitate dissolves in the nitric acid and gas bubbles are given off. Carbonate precipitates dissolve in nitric acid, so this is proof that the precipitate is indeed a barium carbonate. This may all seem overwhelming, but we can summarize our findings into two tables to make it easier to understand. We have seen that when we test halide ions with silver nitrate, they all form precipitates, but of different colors. Chloride ions form a white precipitate. Bromide ions form a pale yellow or cream precipitate, and iodide ions form a yellow precipitate. All the halide ion precipitates are insoluble in nitric acid. Now, let's look at the table for the tests for sulfate and carbonate ions. We saw that both sulfate and carbonate ions form a white precipitate when reacted with barium nitrate. However, only sulfate ions are insoluble in nitric acid. Carbonate ions dissolve in nitric acid. Remember that all these reactions are examples of ion exchange reactions. Both the ions in the two ionic solutions swap, so we say that double displacement has occurred. There has been a lot in this lesson. It would be good if you revise this work while it is still fresh in your mind. Check for more details on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn and use the reactions in aqueous solutions task video. Goodbye for now.